Hey gang, Professor McElroy here at 6.30, Web Design 3, September 2022 section. We're in Learning Module 3. We're in Week 3 of the class. Really good job so far. Learning, starting to navigate, getting comfortable with the WordPress uh, environment, how the template works, how modifying general appearances, theme elements, uh, attaching metadata, building pages based on the index.html or homepage. And now we're starting to populate our, our website. So really good job so far. So I'm gonna open up WordPress. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the nuances that we should be ad addressing and adjusting as we're starting to build our site now. We wanna make this as responsive, as professional, as clear, concise, <laughs> and complete as we can, as we're starting to fine tune each one of, of our pages. I'm gonna spend a little time this week talking about blocks, what they are, what they look like in WordPress, how to manipulate them. We're gonna talk a little bit about the plugin environment and how it affects what you're able to do in a free version of WordPress versus paying a monthly hosting fee, which gives you access to the Jetpack plugins, couple of things that are available at your fingertips that aren't available in the free version, which is what we're navigating through because ours is our website.wordpress.com. So it's free right now. But if we were to pay for hosting, I want to be able to show you where you can access some of those plugin materials uh, for enhancing the experience with your end user as you're building your responsive website design. So I'm going to go in now. I'm going to open up WordPress get into my design uh, that I'm working on with you guys as I'm kind of lecturing through the class. Remember, I'm doing the Bohemian Restaurant down in Bonita Springs. So I've already logged in. So remember, once you log in, you get right into the primary dashboard of your uh, site that you're building. And remember down here is where the appearance can be adjusted. Down here is where the general settings are set up for your site, some of that metadata behind the scenes. Remember the pages tab is where we start adding pages beyond the home page, which is what is the standard starting page when you select the theme and start building a website, your landing page, your splash page, your index.html page, home page, whatever you wanna call it. And you're gonna notice that there's a jetpack area and a plugin area. We're gonna talk about those as we start getting into uh, our designs a little bit further so we can take a look at a few things. So I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna edit the home page because I wanna talk a little bit about look and feel, uh, things we have to be concerned with in a responsive website design environment, things that you may or may not have recognized kind of as we were starting to build. And you'll notice that when we were building and I started building the homepage with you, you'll notice there is what are called blocks. They're in essence, think of them like floating tables that have rows and columns, floating tables that have rows and columns. Now, we know them as div containers. They have an X and Y coordinate that sits on top of elements in our web page. You'll notice that this design has a container sitting on top of this background photo that's set up like this. And here are the elements over here, and it gives you the properties for this little block or container that's sitting in a website. Uh, if we needed to add more material to one of our pages, we could put our cursor anywhere inside of the open areas of our content area and insert a block. And when you insert a block, this is what you get. And you may not know that you can actually adjust how this block functions from a column and row standpoint. So I'm gonna move that a little bit so that you can see in my responsive environment that it's maximum pixel width of this block makes this one line of text, which means if someone views it in a high resolution desktop, they get a certain look and feel. And as they view it on a tablet, this runs into a second line. As it goes into a phone environment, 
it starts to wrap even more the text. Now, we can manipulate that by adjusting the information inside of this block or grid environment. Now, one thing you might want to do and you should do that, well, there's a couple of things. First thing is you wanna always make sure that text on top of images are legible, readable, and clear. So if you have a dark photograph and you have text on top of your dark photograph, please make the text a light color so that you can read it. If it is a light image or a light background, make sure the text is dark so you can read it. That's number one for legibility and readability. Number two is all caps is like you're yelling in the room. So if there's something important that you want in your text area to really be something that stands out, you need to either A, make it all caps, or B, make it bold, or C, make it bold and all caps based on that visual hierarchy that you want for the consumer, the end user, the viewer to absorb. Remember, they're not gonna read all the words. So you wanna be very delicate with how you post text, uh, spell things out, make things function in a certain way so that the viewer has a clear idea of what you're saying, a clear legible. Remember, this could be on a phone where it's really small. You wanna make sure that your textual elements make sense. You also wanna try, if at all possible, to not use images that have watermarks on them. Yes, we're doing this as a, class assignment educational process. So you're gonna use the images that you have at your fingertips. But remember there are free sites out there like pexels.com where you can get non watermarked images that are high resolution and beautiful that you can use for your layout. Try not to use images that have really large watermarks on them, stamps on them, words written over the top. A, they compete with the words that you're putting on the page, and B, it gets really cluttered, and C, it doesn't feel as finished if the images are low res stock watermarked images. So just kind of be aware of that. Now, something you may or may not know, I'm gonna hit the backspace there, because you're gonna notice it's gonna move all the way onto one line. Watch if I hit enter. It actually moves it down to its new paragraph. If you do shift enter, it just, forces a return to the next line. Shift enter is your friend when you're trying to manipulate text and you're trying to kind of move your eye around the page and create in this sense, this is what's called a rag, a rag that has an interesting shape, uh, kind of tears down or tears up in a certain way. So shift enter is a line break. The enter key is a paragraph break in WordPress world. So just know that as now you're building and manipulating your pages and going back and reviewing the pages that you've already built, please be aware of typography, legibility, readability, visual hierarchy, italic if you want something to feel a little bit more like a quotation, like someone is talking to you, right? You can control with bold and italic and uppercase and lowercase and all caps. So just start to be aware of that as you're building your pages because the thoughtfulness of your typographical solutions will really be reflective in the end customer end users appreciation of what you've created. And make sure that you're controlling the color palette of your site based on the colors that you're interested in using for the theme of your site. You'll notice that uh, mine's basically black and white. The restaurant is black and white. So, uh, and you can adjust things, right? You can manipulate content here, however you like to, just giving it a little bit of personality that matches in with your theme. So try to avoid watermark images, be very kind of direct with how you're using typography. I'm gonna make this bold italic because it's the city. And I'm gonna kind of move my mouse down here. And I'm gonna to get to the bottom of the page because we're talking about blocks and you'll notice that this thing has a block set up 
and you'll notice it's three column. Here are the three columns, here are the lines to adjust the columns. Uh, so all of that you can control. You'll notice here that this is a hyperlink that I link to Facebook. Make sure that your social media is linking to Facebook or Instagram or whatever elements you have in there. If your product or service does not have a Facebook or an Instagram or a social media account, just point it to the default facebook.com or instagram.com. Don't allow it to be a broken link. Broken links, even in an educational environment, if someone goes to look at your site as part of your portfolio, they're not going to want to see dead links. They're going to want to see the links for all things, at least going to the appropriate location. So just be aware of that as you're building, finalizing your interior pages as you're building the content for your site. Now, that'll bring us over to the, uh, the bottom page here. I wanna go over here because I wanna show you uh, kind of this block, how this thing is set up and kind of the functionality of WordPress. You're gonna notice that this is a built-in subscribe button and subscribe buttons actually collect information, post to a PHP page and forward to an email address. It builds a database of emails that are collected through a thing like a subscription or a sign up tab. And you'll notice this actually has a built-in counter where as people sign up for the newsletter, in this case, the restaurant magazine, whatever it is, it's actually gonna count the subscribers for, uh, for your particular website you're built. But you're gonna notice right here that when I go to adjust the mail or envelope icon on the subscribe button, it says premium content. By premium content, it means it does not allow the interactor of the content, the user, to post to a PHP page, pull to that form, post to the email, build that database without paid hosting subscription with WordPress. So there is some dynamic content, plug-in content, third-party content that you can post into your site that will be only a space holder until, if, when, you ever decided to use WordPress as a professional application that you could build sites in for clients. This is premium content. So it will allow you to adjust that envelope icon to enter an email address and a subject line if you were a paid subscriber to WordPress as a hosting environment, which you would want to do if you wanted to make a custom domain and store your site online somewhere for the world to see and interact with on a professional level. From an educational standpoint, we're just learning to build in a cloud-based environment. So having hosting space with WordPress is not a requirement at all. It's just uh, know this going forward that if you're using a cloud-based website tool of any kind, if there is dynamic content, something that pulls from a form or a script embedded in the web page theme or template, it's posting to a server, hosting space, virtual real estate you rent from wordpress.com or any other hosting provider, those forms are sitting on their server and they have to interact with those forms, those scripts in order to complete the command that's embedded in your theme or your template. So it's not that it's broken, it's just that you don't have access to the PHP environment, the database environment for this subscribe email collecting tool because we are in a free site. Doesn't mean we can't customize the word, change the text, get it looking the way we want, just like Facebook and Instagram and social media. It should point to the general landing pages for those sites. If your product or service does not have social media pages, if they do, obviously, I want you pointing to the social media pages so that we can see them dynamically in your project that you're building. Either way, they should not be dead links. Nothing on your site should be a dead link. Okay, so that gets us through our blocks, what rows and columns are, what they look like, 
in your website, you see this little plus icon right here, we can add a new dynamic element if we wanted to. Below this quote, we put a photo, we could add a gallery. That's the beauty about WordPress. Look at all of the dynamic elements that WordPress puts at your fingertips. A table, a pull quote, a, let's scroll down, a gallery, a, a downloadable file, slideshows, images, videos, audio. I'm going to keep scrolling because there's all kinds of plugins that you have access to in WordPress. Uh, it allows you to insert these columns, uh, buttons, rows, stacks, separators, which is what that little line is that you see in amongst the blocks that are currently set up there. Layout grids, widgets, so you can post your own calendar in there. You can post or embed custom HTML widgets, which we learned from Web Design 1 and 2. Uh, RSS feeds, you can do star ratings. I mean, just event countdowns. I mean, there are just so many things that you can add with the plus symbol anywhere inside the centering of your page and it will responsively adjust based on what you put in there. And you can add additional social media stuff. I mean, there's just so many things. Wow, they even added TikTok now. Uh, haven't gotten into that yet, but I think I need to because it is something that, uh, that people are really starting to use. I use Google Calendar a lot. I also embed HTML widgets based on what my cl client's needs are, which is right here, where I can actually just paste in an HTML widget in iframe and it will float in here and pull from third-party content. But there's all kinds of stuff, right? There's forms, registration forms, contact forms. Some of this stuff is dynamic and requires you to have some kind of subscription with the WordPress in order to interact with that. It, it even will force you at times to use third-party plugin pay, but it's tied to what they call Jetpack. And so you need a hosting to access Jetpack, which will pull from the PayPal environment. So you can put it in there as space holders. Just know that you don't have access to the dynamic content until you uh, have some hosting space of some kind. So that brings us into our contact page, which is uh, one of the pages we need to add for this week. Um, I went in and did page new and selected this specific form layout from the template of the contact forms. Now, one thing I wanna point out just so that you know, Let's get in here and you'll see this thing, this floating thing. Here is my setup, my form button. And you'll notice that this particular page allows me to enter an email address and it allows me to so if I did web inquiry, it allows me to create a form, a dynamic form inside of my template. Of course, I need to adjust. I need to change this, which you'll notice right now it's pointing to generic. So let's just do chip at havengraphics.com. And then chip at havengraphics.com, open a new tab, and that will allow me to, I forgot to save that. Sorry, I forgot to hit the enter button in order to save that. And then I need to go in and adjust all this information. Know that I could customize this. I like gray. I don't want to have a problem with it because my site is black and white. This form allows me to do some dynamic content. And remember, look how beautiful that looks, right? It's still nested in 
are sight, header, and footer. So I'm still working on populating some of my material as well, right? So when you go to pages, uh, when you go to add a contact page, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna show you, uh, so let's go to contact. So this form right here requires the Jetpack plugin. And when you actually go in to edit that page, it's gonna tell you that you don't have access to some of the dynamic content in that particular page. And I'm gonna show you where that is. And you'll actually see it right here, right? I created a page that ties to this dynamic environment and it requires an update in order to interact with my contact buttons or pages. So I need, it's tracking my log for me, but I need to have full access, right? I need to have access. You can monitor the events, but you can't really dynamically interact with the content. And the same is said for plugins, which is what these are. You have to upgrade to a hosting environment in order to interact with some plugin environments. Now, WordPress is great because it has a huge list of plugins like WooCommerce, um, custom contact forms that third party developers use. This is open source. So developers create all kinds of plugins that interact. You'll notice there are free ones that you can embed in your WordPress site that does not cost. There's always a catch with does not cost. There's normally a limit of functionality and customization when it's free. It wants you to pay for access to all of the bells and whistles that you might want. So if you're trying to do booking and you're trying to do scheduling, a lot of these plugins, which we saw from Web Design 1 and 2, require a subscription of some kind. So just know that this plugin area is where you have access to all the dynamic content, but much of it requires a plan upgrade, at least a hosting level of commitment in WordPress to really interact with that content. Because remember, it's sitting on their virtual real estate, it's sitting on their server, and you're pushing information to their server, it's collecting that data and pushing it out. So if it's collecting credit card information, it's cataloging emails, it's building a database of information, it has to reside somewhere. It can't reside locally. So even if you're in Dreamweaver, you're building your own custom uh, contact page and you have your own PHP file that sets up the email address, puts the, puts the information into the database, pushes it out. It actually doesn't work in Dreamweaver even as a live view without posting it to the server, the hosting environment and going to the URL www.chip.com slash contact.html that form won't actually work until it's posted out and it has a, a script folder that has that PHP information in there to post to and through in order for those dynamic areas to work. So just know there is some functionality limit to what you can do in WordPress without a hosting environment. So that's even a great talking point for sharing your portfolio, sharing a website you might have built. You can say, I built this in a cloud-based environment. I used WordPress. You'll notice some of the dynamic forms, some of the content I'm pulling don't function. It's because it's not uh, hosted on a paid hosting IP address. It's on the free one. So they limit the amount of content pulling and scripting driven forms because they want you to host. So it's a good opportunity to kind of teach a potential uh, employer or customer your understanding of kind of how the web works and how content interacts from local to computer to hosting environment out to the world to interact with. So, uh, so that's where we're at for week three. Everyone's doing well. Make sure you notice the critiquing I've done on some of your submissions 
to make sure that we're building thoughtful solutions, that we're building well-constructed uh, pages inside of our uh, web solution. So know that we're building contact us page. So we have home, about, products or services, contact, and social media integration. Now remember, when you upload your URL, make sure that you have published those pages for the world to see. If you haven't, make sure you do a screenshot of the content you embedded in your new pages so we can make sure that your site is uh, finished to its professional level of completion. Great job so far. I can't wait to see the additional pages you add, uh, what you've done to uh, continue to evolve the brand that you're building online. And remember, always go back based on my critiques and make any adjustments. We want to make sure this five to seven pages, which is what our final site will be, is as professional and complete as possible. Good job so far, everyone. Uh, have a great week.